What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager Save. This is episode number 103. And today returning with another treble header as face Newcastle away at St James Park in the Champions League league phase. Then her to Berlin away, a tricky test Olympia Stadium and Bayer Leverkusen at home, which will be our final game before the winter break in Germany. Before we get to the games though, shout out to getting on off camera. And of course, in the last episode, you saw us change our tactical system, and it worked for the first game. 3 1 victory away at the Dragao against Porto, but we definitely got unstuck in the following game where the Allianz, yep, 3 0 loss away against the 20 time champions in a row, Bayern Munich, because we're still yet to taste victory against them in the league in all our meetings against Bayern so far. But we did bounce back in our final game with a 4 1 win at home to Augsburg. Just a one game off camera, and it was a comfortable 3 0 win away at the newly promoted Armenia Bielfeld. Yep, Luca Romero gave us the breakthrough right before the break, but this is one of those games where, I mean, Bill, I think Bill took a shot in the entire game, so yeah, it was another one of those sort of gimme clean sheets for Dennis Seaman, who actually capped in this game because we were missing both the Dragon and Creswell due to injury and suspension, but I mean, Coco and Fernando got our other two in the second half in a very comfortable 3 0 win. So, right now in the Bundesliga, question is, has it done anything for the table? Well, not really. You can see Leipzig still top of the table for now, four points clear, and of course, our game in hand. Uh, sorry, their game in hand was one. So, yeah, it's now back to four points. And we're also four clear of Schalke, who have risen to third place after having a great run of form and the best in the Bundesliga so far. So, Schalke popping out of nowhere to get into the top four. Bayern right behind him with 30. But actually, for Bayern's sake, they lost their last game at home to Bayern Leverkusen. Now, back-to-back -back losses and three and four in all competitions. Bayern Munich... Uh, listen, you can't count Bayern Munich out, man. You know, it's like counting Real Madrid out of the Champions League. You just can't do it. You know, you can't do it because you know about the history. But uh, Bayern Munich have really stumbled out of the blocks this season. Another loss there at home to Bayern Leverkusen. So we're not counting them out. But they're now nine points behind RB Leipzig. If there was ever a time for someone to dethrone Bayern, it's right now. And right now, Leipzig in the driving seat. We're in the passenger seat. And Schalke and Bayern Leverkusen and Mainz as well. They're making up the back three of our car. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what reference this is. But even so, Bayern struggling. Only nine wins in 15. If not this season, then when? If not this season, then when? And heading into the game, uh, I just want to show you a couple things that have happened off camera. Uh, we've had a youth intake preview. And yeah. We shall, we shall see. It's been regarded as a good intake, but like I said, I haven't had one really good one since the save began, to be fair. Other than Paul Jenkins, the one that got away. What a legend, man. Seriously, scoring those two goals against Bayern and RB Leipzig for uh, for, uh, for her to Berlin. But also as well, um, I've also sold a clause as well. Uh, so I've got £10.6 million pounds for selling a 50% sell-on clause of Kim jong Hyun. Now, if you remember when I first joined here, there were a few Dortmund players that I decided to sell straight off the bat. Uh, he was one of them. Uh, we sold him. What? That's not right. Well, ignore that. We, we sold him uh, to uh, to Brentford. I think that was, was that actually was that the first year? Or it might have been the second year actually. I think it was on loan in the second year we sold him. I think, I think. Um... Because it wasn't for this season. Yeah, actually, do you know what? It was, it was last season. We sold him at the start of last season for £7 million. Sorry. Get yeah, my seasons mixed up. Easy to do when you're 11 years in. But uh, yeah, £7 million we sold him to Brentford for. And um, yeah, we had that 50% sell-on clause. He's a young South Korean. Already 41 caps at just 21 years old. I mean, a 20 determination could turn in to a really good DM. But... I thought it was best just to cash in on that clause with it being 10.6 mil, the highest it had ever been. I'd rather have the money. That takes the proper full transfer fee, if you will, up to 17 million point six million. You know, my is terrible. But anyway, because of that sale of the clause there, it means what we have done is we've risen our bank balance now. Got it all over the place today. We've risen our bank balance now to 80 million pounds and the transfer budget is up to 34.7 million pounds now. I am considering trying to bring someone in in the January transfer window. We know Vim is going to leave at the end of the season. I don't want to sell anyone mid-season, but you'll see here there's a young, or not young anymore, 25 years old, there's a, a mid-20s English centre-half that plays for Sheffield United that I would like to pick up. Now, you know I've got a fetish for changing players' positions. Where is this guy's negative if we transform him into a BWM? I'm not really sure. 
He's an okay marker, a good tackler, okay positioning, but fabulous teamwork and work rate and very aggressive and decent enough bravery as well. And physically, he's also got 18 natural fitness, 19 strength, 15 acceleration, crucial on a BWM, and 13 strength. Yeah, not too bad either. So I'm looking at this guy and thinking... I know he's now 25, so it's hard to change positions of players and give them new roles when they get further on in their careers, but I'm actually looking at this guy and thinking, I'll tell you right now, BWM is really the only area where we don't have like a class player. We can't afford Irasevich, we can't afford the chump, we can't afford Pugliese, the old boys with Borussia, with uh, Bournemouth, sorry, but if I was to buy someone else... Hopefully, I can try and negotiate with Sheffield United and get him for under that minimum fee release clause, which is £63 million. Pounds. This guy, to me, fuck left back. Centre half, yeah, could do that as well. To me, I, I look at those stats and I'm thinking, ball with a midfielder, why not? Why not indeed? So anyway, uh, heading into the first game of this episode is indeed Newcastle away St. James's Park. Man, when you talk about falling off, by the way, last year they had an amazing season in the Premier League and they, alongside Bournemouth, made the top four. They had an amazing season last year, finishing in the top four, third place finish. But this year, my goodness, they haven't had a mass exodus or anything like that. Their squads remain largely the same, but they've had a real drop-off this year, dropping a 15th place in the table and they're struggling mindfully. Even so, it's the champions... It's the Champions League. It's a, it's a different ball game in European football. So, as we head to St. James's, let's see if they can try and get back into good form here. So, I think it's, it's my first time going back to England since I've joined Dortmund. I think it might be. I think it might be. Anyway, uh, this is our team, as you'll see. Creswell, like I mentioned there, did miss the last game through injury. Gashed up a leg. So, almost the first game today, but should come back for the following two. So, yeah, big blow to have Creswell out for a couple of games, being the skipper. But, thankfully, the last game didn't matter too much. Hope you want today either. Mane, Stridi, Landshuter, and Dos Santos all need a rest tonight as they're a little bit tired. Everyone else, though, is fine. So, we're going to go 5-3-2. It's that new tactical shape we created in the last episode here. And this is our team. We've got Dennis between the sticks and the back five of what is going on with me today? The back five of Croza, Flavio, Bennett and Drago with Fresnader at right wing back. The midfield trio is Oscan as the ball in midfielder. Curing his box to box. First start for Lars since coming in on loan from Manchester United to me. I just haven't been able to fit him into my tactical shape. But in this system, I actually think I'll do quite well. So Lars, box to box alongside Gio as the advanced playmaker. Company as the DLF. And Mukoko, of course, our top scorer, leads the line. On the bench, you've got Alfonso, Steiger, Van Loo, Subotic, Watjen, Vimmer, Vagaman, Idogan, Diego, Mohamed, Romero, and Norton as well. Very young bench for the first of our three games today. It's the Champions League. I've got to be honest here, I'm more focused on that trip to the Olympic Stadion on Saturday. First of three, it is Newcastle. I think my first time returning to England is leaving Bournemouth. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, I just checked, and it is my first return to England since leaving English football. Obviously, you weren't in European season one due to Dortmund's catastrophic season the year before. And last season, we, of course, had eight league games in the league phase of the Champions League, none of which against English sides. And then, of course, we were knocked out in the last 16 by Stad Rene. Not for the first time in my managerial career. So, yeah, first trip back to England. And uh, as we enter this game, Newcastle horrendously out of form. So, with the final four games being really tough, this is, this is the game I'd say we need to win. So... 33 minutes in, still 0-0 for now. I, I guess a point wouldn't be a bad result, but if we are to stay in the top eight, I think this is the game we're most likely to win out of the remainder. Very tough games to come, of course. So first proper highlight falling here. 40 minutes in, so Cardin Magpies haven't had a proper chance. That might fall right here. Tariq Lamptey down the right-hand side, looking to cross and does... And McNeil does really well there and squirms it into the bottom corner as well. First year, that's really good work to be fair. Holding that ball up on a tight angle, keeping hold of it, swiveling and then finding the bottom corner. Fair, fair play. That's a goal you want to see on 3D because that was actually pretty impressive. There was at least two yellow shirts next to him. And the way he gets hold of that ball there to turn, get onto that preferred left foot and finish as well. Fair play. That's actually pretty good work there from McNeil. We've had a lot of tired legs out there this season due to the fixture congestion. And his company has just been tripped up. That is a penalty and a chance for us to get back on those turns right before the break. So again, we miss it. we're missing quite a few of our key starters tonight. No more key than Fernando, of course. But down by a goal. And I, I, I think from this point, I definitely would take a point. And a penalty for Dortmund, which I'm sure Ozcan is going to dispatch. It was Mukoko, no chance. But Salah, our former vice-captain, might have lost that vice-captain duty. But, oh, he does miss from the spot. He's at the post. First time I've seen Ozcan miss a penalty. But that is now three, no, four missed penalties out of five this season for Dortmund players. I'll say that again. We've missed four of our five penalties this season. Yes. 
very frustrating indeed. Yep, every single FM there's certain things you notice that are either overpowered or a little bit, I wouldn't say broken, but let's just say debatable, if you will. And for me this year it's been away days, five at the back systems that I can't stand, and, uh, and also pens as well. I, I, I've never had an FM like this where I've missed this many penalties, or at least I can't think of one. Four missed penalties out of five. That is pretty poor, isn't it? It's Anthony Company Blazers just over the bar. So we've not played that badly out there, to be fair. This is... This is like the Porto game, you know, even though we went to goal down, we are actually doing all right. We've had a couple of great chances, one from the spot and a good chance there for Anthony. We're not doing badly and there's not that many flaws in our tactical show. We're just not taking the chances. So for the final 30 minutes, I changed to our 4-2-3-1. Uh, our but unfortunately, once again, we are uh, we're going to come up short. I, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but as far as I'm concerned, away days in FM. Listen, I know they're going to be harder to win, obviously, but in my opinion, they're just a little too hard. When we played our new tactical system or the OP4231, I didn't feel confident because, well, we're on the road. And once again, we slipped to a 1-0 loss where we miss a penalty, we create a golden chance through company and miss and a one chance Newcastle lad. They took it. Yeah, disappointed in that, but I can't be too surprised. I, like, Listen, like I said before, away days are harder to win. Everyone accepts that. But in my opinion, I, put it this way, I've never played an FM like this before, where it's just every time you go away, you think you're going to lose. So frustrating. So, second game of three, Hertha away at the Olympia Stadion. They've beaten Leipzig, they've beaten Bayern, and now can they beat us? Just before that, by the way, our youth facilities have now been re-upgraded to state-of-the-art due to technical technological advances um, in the football world. It actually dropped down a level, but as soon as that happened, I was like to the board, okay, bring them back to state-of-the-art, man. You know me, it was the same with Bournemouth. I love, like, building buildings, if you will, and improving facilities. It's so cool. It's so cool. But, uh, yeah, heading to the game, regardless, again, hurt your away. Uh, the games to keep your eyes on today. Bayer are at home to Augsburg. Leipzig got to go away to Stuttgart. Tough game there, so we'll keep our eyes on that. And Bayern are away against Nuremberg. Should be a banker tomorrow. Schalke are at home to Bielefeld. Should be a banker for them themselves. So, heading to the game, hurt your away. Again, we, we need at least a point here heading into this game to keep pace with RB Leipzig. We have a chance to possibly go, depending on results, eight points clear. So, heading into the game, uh, this will be our team. Why is Mohamed on the bench? I don't know. Heading to the game, uh, this will be our team. I've said Crows can get a night off for this game here because he needs a rest, and this will be our lineup. So, back to the 4 2 3 1 for this game here. And it's Dennis in goal with about four being Stefano, the Dragon, Creswell, and Fresneda, with Lanchuta being deeper, where I don't really want to play him, but with Crows are out. I guess I might as well. He's alongside Mane and Dos Santos and Romero. The inside forwards of Reina supporting Mukoko. On the bench, you've got Alfonso, Bennett, Flavio, Watgen, Oscan, Curing, Vimadio, and Anthony Company as well, who really has struggled this season. So, second game, Olympia Stadion. Need to get at the very least a point, and I would take that. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. Pumping my fists in the, uh, the pre game team talk because I've got to inspire some passion in my boys man honestly because this has been a very inconsistent run which has seen us you know at one point look as though we could over overtake Leipzig and, uh, and go a few points clear instead we're looking at the possibility of Leipzig having a very good lead heading into that winter break so yeah we'll keep our eyes on their fixture away against Stuttgart at the Mercedes-Benz Arena, and Lord knows we need a big away day victory here, which we rarely get. For Znader to Mane, as we look for the opening chance of the game, quarter of an hour in, as we shall get ourselves forward with the kid. Back to the captain, and now Mane out wide to Fresneda, the Spaniard, galloping forward, crossing, drops to Mukoko at the far post, and Yusufa opens the scoring, teasing ball by Ivan, and Yusufa converts from three yards out. Over to you, Leipzig, over to you. This will now see us cut the gap on them to two points as results stand. No, four points, four points. Oh, wait, hang on, they must have gone in front. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It would have been two points, it's now four. Gvardiol's got them in front away. And a Mercedes-Benz Arena. And this really is just typical Doxy boy shit, isn't it? Like, seriously, the one year, the one year where Bayern Munich have an off year and uh, we're not good enough to take the title from them. Instead, it will go to Leipzig instead. Who haven't even been a threat since this save began. Absolutely typical. Still 25 minutes in. Don't even worry about it. Focus on what you can do. Fernando, through the gap. Great ball. Giovanni Reina must finish and doesn't. Clean off the line after a little deflection. Fresneda to the Dragon. And forward we go with uh, old Creswell. Poor pass there. Really poor. 
And oh, what a tackle by the Dragon on Kareem Adeyemi. Last ditch tackle by the Serbian. And we remain still leading by one. A let off there. It was her to almost found their level. And as things stand, whilst we're picking up a massive win here away at the Olympia Stadion, it's not going to matter. With Leipzig still leading by a goal to nil. Come on, Stuttgart. So far, so good. One golden chance for Hertha, thankfully, spurned after a great tackle by the Dragon. But can't get complacent out there. Still leading by just the one. We need to see this out. If, if Leipzig are going to win, then we've got to match their results. Simple as that. If we fail to do that, they'll be going at least six points clear and that even before the halfway stage is just a lead which I don't think we'll be able to chip away at I really don't they've been that good this season as her to send over the top and he aims onto it I think he's offside though Str oh Strini gets off the line regardless and yeah he was indeed offside he wouldn't have counted but Stefano wasn't to know that couple of let offs here for Dortmund as we still hold on to that slender one goal lead. A second, and I think we'll take control of this game. But as things stand right now, if you're going to put your money on a second goal, you put it on her to Berlin, finding a leveler. Land shooter to Dos Santos. And now Gio takes over. Out wide is Stefano Stridi. Down the left-hand side. Into Gio. And it's a poor pass. And away come Herta once again. That leveler is coming. That leveler is coming. We need a second goal. As Romero's taken down. That might be a red, and it is. We needed that. We needed that. Red card, and we should be able to see this game out from here. Oh, yes! Stuttgart found their level at home to Leipzig. Well done, boys. So we're kind of cutting it out to two as things stand. Hopefully, they'll be able to see that out of there, and we'll be able to see this out as well. Now, since we've had the man advantage, we haven't really been under much pressure. What I am going to do is say to the boys here, just time waste a little bit and play at a lower tempo as well. We're trying to kill this clock a little bit as we hold on to this one-goal lead and see these three points out. So as things stand, we're cutting the gap to two, but only if we see this out ourselves here. Vimmer all the way back to Dennis as the Dragon gives it to the captain, Charlie Creswell, and forward we go. Filippo Mane to Fresneda, into the kid, out wide his company, off the bench, trying to get round his man, but fucking hell, he has absolutely lost it this season, Anthony Company. He's been shocking. When you talk about a drop-off, this is one of the worst drop-offs I've had in this save thus far, and Herta now looking for that leveller. Down this right-hand side, Vimmer can't dispossess fully, and they need that chance to find that equaliser. And get a point. And oh, Dennis, well done, mate. First time he's done something useful since coming in. Brilliant stop at near post. And we still lead by one. Can we hold on? Oscan over the top for no one. It's to finally get it on the fucking deck, mate. Get it on the deck. We don't do route one shit. <sighs> it's coming. That leveler is coming. Even with that man advantage. It's her to look for the equaliser. Off the post, fucking hell. Get the men behind the ball. Get the men behind the ball here. Take off Yusufa. Bring Land Shooter back as well. And let's bring on, let's, let's push Fresnader up to her to right middle. We'll bring on Wat Genizea as a wing back here as we aim to see this game out. Do you know what? Here on, time waste as much as you like, boys. I don't care anymore. And also, don't counter press. Regroup. Regroup. Slow the pace down. And try and see this out. We're almost there. We're trying to shut up shop against her to Berlin with a man advantage. <laughs> this is how hard it is to win away days. But we have hung on to it. Massive save by Dennis. First time he's done something useful. And that will see us cut the gap on Leipzig to two points. Weren't our best. We got the result. Well done, boys. And Dennis coming up clutch there right at the death. RB Leipzig, we cut the gap on them to two. Massive, massive, massive win. It seems like after every single game, my head physio comes to me and says, Gaffer, you've got to give your stars rest time. I can't! I can't, man! Seriously! Occasionally I will, but I couldn't for that game, and I can't for the following game. Leverkusen, who they themselves are back in his title race as well after their win, and have cut the gap on Leipzig themselves to seven. So, uh, Nuremberg and the late kick off at home to Bayern. So, we'll process through that one there and hope that Bayern will slip up again in what's been a tough first half of the campaign for them. If that's the case, no, Jamal Musiala with the winner. So, they're back into third. And like I said, you, you just can't count Bayern out. They are that good. You simply cannot count them out, regardless of how many points they were behind at one stage. They've cut it to seven themselves. And RB Leipzig on the back of that draw will nervously be looking over their shoulders now. Not at us, but at Bayern Munich instead. 
instead. Oh, look at Landshooter's development, by the way. I am loving this. He's he's dropped off a little bit after a red hot start to the season, but even so, we are really seeing this guy take his game to the next level this season, and you love to see it. To be fair, in that game there, playing DLP is not going to influence the game. That's why I said before, you've got to play him further before. But anyway, yeah, Schalke at home to Armenia Bielfeld. And that should be a banker there against newly promoted Bielfeld in Gelsenkirchen. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe Bielfeld will shock him and uh, do us a favour there. But again, now they've dropped down to fifth in the table... It's not really them I'm too worried about. The, 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 the two teams I'm most worried about are, obviously, Leipzig and, uh, and Bayern as well. But we're still keeping an eye on those teams. Schalke, Bayer, and, uh, and also Mainz as well. And as we process through, we shall see if they got the job done at the Veltins or if they had a slip-up against Bielfeld. No, they did get the win by two goals. So back into third, they'll cut the gap on us to four and Leipzig to sixth as well. As Mainz did draw, to be fair, at home to Eintracht Frankfurt. It's crazy, man. Nine points separating the top six. It's been a long time since the Bundesliga looked like this. But for the first time in a very long time, the title race is wide open. Hmm. And uh, just before we get to the uh, the Saturday game, we didn't realise this, but uh, we got Leipzig playing in midweek. They're at home to Schalke. Big game there. I think if Schalke failed to win that, they might drop off in the second half of the season. But if Leipzig win, that's a big state of intent there. Going to the winter break, guaranteed to be top of the table. So, unless Schalke can do us a favour, Leipzig will be guaranteed to be top by the time we return from the winter break. And they'll be top at Christmas as well. And they are indeed. 2 0 win there at home to Schalke. So back home, shot car, they get the win. And uh, they've now returned. Uh, stay top, top, sorry. Means they're guaranteed to stay top heading into the winter break. All we can do is try and keep pace with them. So moving on, third and final game. And we need to make a back to back win to keep pace with Leipzig. They're at home to Munchen Gladbach in their final game before the winter break. I didn't realize they're going to play on the weekend as well as in midweek. But that means that before our nighttime kickoff, they could possibly go eight points clear if they extend their 100% start at home this season, which I expect them to do. So I can't see much in Gladbach doing us a favour. So if we don't win, Leipzig could go eight or seven points clear. And yes, we'll still have the game in hand, but at that point, just give them the ties. Now, Schalke have just lost at Union Berlin, so I think they're done now. I think they're... Oh, my God! Finally, Leipzig have lost a fucking game at home. First time all season long. Wow, they are human. Munch and Gladbach. Okay, all right, so that means now the gap is five, but we've got two games in hand. If we win them both, we'll go top for the first time this season. Easier said than done, though, especially with Bayer Leverkusen in this nighttime kickoff. They themselves need to win to get back into the title race 10 points behind. So a lifeline handed to us by Munch and Gladbach. An absolute shocker. Their first slip up at home all season long in the league. Can we capitalise, or in typical Dortmund fashion, will we turn down the lifeline handed to us? So, heading into the game, this will be our team. Once again, 4 3 3, but the one change to our starting lineup with Dennis being between the sticks again, the back four being Stridi to Dragon, Creswell, and Fresneda. Crows is back in alongside Mane, and Dos Santos is on the left with Romero on the right and Land Shooter through the middle supporting Mukoko. He's just wasted at DM. He needs to play further forward. We all know that, right? So, yeah, uh, on the bench, you've got Alfonso, Bennett, Flavio, Watjen, Oscan, Vimorena, Company and Norton. I did not expect that, but a miracle live line handed to us. But in Dortmund fashion, will we bottle it? <laughs> Come on, Borussia Dortmund. We can't afford to. Wow, I did not expect that, but a lifeline handed to us by Munch and Gladbach. And we've got to take advantage, but, you know, we've had, we've been in this position before. You know, we've had lifelines handed to us before, and we've blown it. As early as last season, where we had that loss at, funnily enough, the Red Bull Arena that ended our title run. Mukoko trying to get through. Land shooter, oh, denied and cleared by Leverkusen. Attempt from range, palmed away, but that's the start we wanted. Even a draw won't be enough for me, because it means that even if we win the following game in hand, Leipzig will still be top. And that's the only slip up at home they've had all season long. So we can't afford to fail to get the win here. Romero. Oh, great save. Mukoko! Turns in the rebound. And Dortmund lead. Well, we led by a goal away at the Olympia Stadion. And we had to dig in and hold on to it. As we were closing the game out with a man advantage to ensure we wouldn't slip up. We've got to make sure we hold on to this one as well and maintain our 100% home for, which will mean this will be eight wins from eight at the Signal Iduna Park in the league, heading into the winter break. We'll still be in second, 
But again, we'll have a game in hand that could send us top if we win. Dortmund in front of the break. But it's been a very, very tight game so far. So I'll say to the boys here, things are going well. I know you can be even better. Get that second goal. And unlike the game anyway at Hertha Berlin, we should be able to see the game out comfortably. Come on, we need a second. Mane to Kroza. And chips it over the top. But it's cleared away. No, it's not. Mukoko robs his man. Surely you so far. Off the line. I'll tell you what, I see a lot of goal line clearances this year, but even so we're still leading by one. Leverkusen haven't really turned up here. They haven't really turned up. So unless we let them out of the ropes, then we should be able to see this game out comfortably. It, it all depends on now. If we take control of this game, get that second goal and wrap it up. The longer we leave it at 1-0 and keep Leipzig in this game, the more chance there is they might score a weldy, a mistake, a deflection, whatever. It's on us now to find that extra gear and make sure we wrap these points up in a game we've had complete control of for the most part. Lovely ball out wide by Marnie to his Italian compatriot Stridi, who attacks down the left. He's got Dos Santos with him. He's found him. Fernando in behind, going all the way! There was something in the air tonight. The stars were bright. Fernando! And number nine does it again. Comes up big when I need him. Lovely ball in by Stridi. And Fernando does the rest. 2-0 Dortmund will still be second. But we'll cut it to two with a game in hand. I've been moaning all season long that Leipzig simply don't slip up at home. They've finally done it. And now we look to be taking advantage. Creswell gets it on the deck and forward we go. With that two-goal lead, aiming to wrap these points up. Filippo Mane, back to the captain. And now the Dragon takes over. Our new leadership duo, trying to control this game and hold on to these three points for us. Fernando, Mukoko offside, not going to count. It's a nice ball by Fernando, waiting for another Bundesliga assist. It's been a while since his last one, really, but Mukoko was definitely a couple of yards off there. Don't need the VAR check, really. I can tell that from here. It's definitely off. Keep it calm, boys. Keep it calm. Company finds, oh, Jordan Norton, who simply cannot buy a goal as the young Australian blazes a golden chance to end his goal right there. But that is going to do it. The Dortmund fans are going to celebrate cutting the gap to two, heading into the winter break, and knowing we'll still have the game in hand as well. But for me on the sidelines, I know all about the history of Dortmund. We are keeping it very calm indeed. We'll cut the gap to two, but I want to remind everyone, there's still a whole half of the season left to play, and we're still in second place. It's going to be a big win and a lifeline handed to us, but don't think that we are now in the driving seat, because we simply aren't. We're in second place, and I'll say, well done, lads. That was a good win for us. Keep it calm heading in to the winter break. We're still second. There's still a whole half of the season left to go. Lifeline handed to Dortmund. We took it, but there's still a whole other half to go. So that will end today's episode of the FM Save, guys. So big thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have then, please do drop a like. Dortmund cutting the gap to two with a game in hand, but keeping it very calm. Have a great day. Much love to you all. I'll return after the winter break with games against, so it's got to be those, those two there, doesn't it? Bayern in the DFB Pokal third round and a tricky test away against FSV Mainz as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love. Keep it calm. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Football Manager Save very soon.